call to order uh, the regular meeting of the Upper Providence Board of Supervisors for this Tuesday, September 3rd, 2019. And we'll start with the Pledge of Allegiance. Please stand. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> The first item is a motion to approve the board agenda. Has everybody had a chance to look at it? Any questions, changes? I'll entertain a motion. I'll make a motion to approve the board agenda for September 3rd, 2019. Second that. I have a motion and a second to approve the board of agenda, board agenda of September 3, 2019. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, motion carries. Um, public comment. We're right up early this morning, and um, we will hear from anybody on any item. Just let us know if it's an agenda item. Please tell us which item number. Please keep your comments to three minutes or less. Anybody want to talk? <laughs> Step right up. How you doing? Please, please state your name and your address. Hi, my name's Rich Pigeon. I live at 609 Holler Road. I come to the meeting to try and get a little help. Um, I live uh, right adjacent to the new driveway for the global packaging project. And the water company tied in across Hollow Road from the project. And uh, since my house is right next to the tie-in, all the trucks that go up and down the road, you know, they start like four something in the morning. When they hit the seam for that new water pipe, it sounds like a gunshot. So, I mean, you know, we live there. We got the bedroom windows, and it's very, very loud. And if the water company would just straighten out that seam where they put the water pipe in, that noise would go away. I talked to Joe Gambone, and he said it was the water company's responsibility. So. You Did know. you call anybody from the township? No, I'm here. Oh. That's the only reason I'm here is just okay, to uh, you can call us and we'll, I'm sure we can uh, reach out to the water company and see if they can uh, work on that. And is it just a rut? Is that what's That's it. They put a seam. It doesn't even look bad. It's All about right. an inch low and the back trailer doors on those tractor trailers are probably a hundred or more a day. They make a sound. Right, so they, they have a duty to, to repair that road to uh, its original condition. If they don't, we'll hold them accountable. Uh, so I'm sure that we will uh, reach out and make a call. When I call here to ask about who do I ask for, or, or are you, you're just going to address it? We'll address it to the township's public works director who okay. issues road occupancy permits. And okay. if the water company applied for one, we issued one to them. They're obligated to make the restoration properly. Right. Thank you very much. You're okay. welcome. All right. Yeah. Thank you. Anyone else? It's open mic night. Hi. I'm Karen D'Angelo. I'm representing the Montgomery County Library District. Um, 1001 Powell Street is where the library is. And is. I'm, the, I'm the district consultant librarian. And I'm here to let you know that I'm available to assist LL and S. Library Systems and Services, if you go with them or anyone else that you work with, with library code, with standards, with all of the different things that have to do with library services in Montgomery County. Thank you. Thank you. Last call. Anybody else? All right. Oh, we've got a hand. I'm Kathy Leach, and I live at 109 Yerkes Road in Collegeville. And I'm um, wondering, is that Silver Rhino Yorkie Station a done deal? Are they definitely going to put in residents there at the end of 29 in Yorkies Road? It's on the agenda. Presentation is on the agenda. We'll have to see tonight. what they're going to say. I'm sorry, Tim, say it again. It's a presentation tonight. It's a presence, not no, a done deal. No decision is on the board's agenda tonight. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? 
All right, well, thank you. And we're moving on to uh, executive session. We had one before this meeting that had to do with personnel matters. Um, next is approval of the bill list. Has everyone had a chance to see it? Any questions? If there's no questions or discussion, do I have a motion? I'll make a motion to approve the bill list for August 16, 2019 to August 29, 2019 for the amount of $466,528. A second that. We have a motion and a second to approve the bill list from August 16 through August 19, 2019 in the amount of $467,528. $67,528. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Approval of the minutes. Has everyone had a chance to look at, read the minutes? Any questions, additions, corrections? Discussion? I know I had a spelling correction on Dehui, or Dewey. It's pronounced Dewey. Anything else? No. I'll make a motion to approve the meeting minutes of the August 19th, 2019 regular meeting. I second that. We have a motion and a second to approve the meeting minutes of the August 19, 2019 regular meeting. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Public hearing, none. Old, bis ugh, old business. A presentation update for the previously mentioned proposed Silver Rhino Yerkes Station project. Good evening. My name is Allison Fritches. I represent uh, Silver Rhino Holdings and Land Silver, who is a uh, principal to be here tonight. Um, as this is not a done deal, we're here tonight to give a brief update of where we are and also to request from the board that they schedule a public hearing on the zoning amendment. Um, we started this process back in April of 2018. Um, we were first before this board and told you what our plans were. At that point, um, my client had in mind one specific piece. Since that time, um, the township has included other pieces in the zoning amendment. One of those other pieces is what we're calling the Hopwood piece on uh, Collegeville Road. He's also interested in developing that piece as well. Um, he's going to tell you a little bit about uh, what he's proposing on for each development, which is including um, a trail and, as you probably know, close to $5 million in traffic improvements to those roads. That is our essentially free, free traffic improvements that are not in the taxpayer dollars. So, a um, little bit where we've been, we've, like I said, we've been here first April 2018. Since that time, we've been to the Planning Commission about five or six times. Last time we were at the Planning Commission, um, they recommended 5-0 to bring it to the board um, to consider scheduling for a public hearing. We do need the October 21st date for the public hearing because my client is, settle, is scheduled to settle um, beginning of November. So we are asking the board uh, tonight to uh, schedule for the public hearing on October 21st. I understand for speaking with staff that there may be some cleanup items they'd like to look at. Um, if we do schedule for the 21st, there's no reason that we can't, um, in these next two weeks, talk about doing some cleanup items so that we can send it to the Planning Commission, the County Planning Commission. They can do their 33-day review and can still have it on the agenda for the public hearing on the 21st. So um, that's where we, we are. If, unless the board has any questions of me, my client can come up and explain uh, the presentation of what he's proposing for each of the, of the parcels. Hi, um, good to see you all again. I'll make this as quick and painless as possible. Uh, development consists of three pieces. Uh, the Yerkes piece, which is on the board right now, 180 to 200 residential units in those five structures, five story, uh, four story structure, four story structure, five story, five story, one story community center clubhouse. It will be built green, big green roofs that you can see. Uh, there will be 
uh, tons of balconies, electric car charging stations, bike storage areas. Basically, it'll be a residential conduit to the Perkyoman Trail, which is right there. Can I give you that? Sure. I felt like I was talking loud. Is this on? Um, it'll basically be a residential conduit to the Perkyoman Trail, which is right there, and all the natural beauty that's around it. Uh, if you could advance one. This is just some conceptual architecture for what we would put on there. Advance again, please. More conceptual architecture for what would be there. Advance again, please. Part number two is the Hopwood piece. This is Hopwood Road. This is often referred to as Hopwood Farm, roughly 22 acre piece. Uh, we are proposing 18 structures, each of which would contain three carriage homes for a total of 54 housing units. They'll be beautifully designed, meticulously landscaped. To make it all work, well, actually advance, please. Conceptual architecture, advance, please. Conceptual architecture, again, for Hopwood. All right, to make it all work, we have to fix some roads because right now we're talking about the intersection of Hopwood Road and 29, which is right there. It doesn't look like that right now. You come down Hopwood Road to a stop sign. 29's a two-lane free-for-all. If you're trying to make a left out of Hopwood, you drive down there, stop at the stop sign, put your blinker on, start turning and pray, and then maybe you make it, maybe you don't. It experiences accidents at one and a half times the national average, uh, and it's been noted to me a number of times as being the worst intersection in the township. In order to make these projects viable, people who would be buying up here or renting in here have to be able to get to both places Thus, we would pr uh, propose to replace that intersection that's not working well with a state-of-the-art, light-controlled intersection. It will include two full through lanes in both directions. It will include a left turn lane in both directions. And coming northbound on 29, it will include a decel lane into the Yerkes project. Uh, so it'll thus be six lanes across at the light. Um, in addition, it's currently only two lanes all the way through here, but it will be widened from about a couple hundred feet n uh, south of the Perkyoman Boulevard light into two lanes, and it will continue as two lanes, will widen it to two lanes, all the way to, I guess it's about South Mennonite Road, where it currently stretches into two lanes. And then it would be a continuous two-lane shot all the way up to Rivercrest Golf Club where it pinches back down to one. In the other direction at Yerkes Road, we would widen it out to two lanes. It would go two lanes through the light. And then we would be expanding the culvert over Norma Run in order to accommodate the uh, increased width and then bring it into where it's currently two lanes such that it would be a full two-lane shot from Yerkes Road all the way down to, I guess it's... Uh, the Redner's um, uh, strip mall in Collegeville. We would also be uh, replacing the culvert on Hopwood Road uh, in order that we could get there uh, a dedicated turn lane when you're coming out of there through the light uh, and a dedicated through lane. All of this construction obviously carries with it a heavy price tag. It's a roughly $5 million project both projects are necessary to defray that great cost. Uh, last point, and then I'll move on. Um, from Hopwood, we would also be bringing a trail down the north side of Hopwood Road to the new intersection. Uh, when you get to the light by foot or bike or jogging, you push your little pedestrian crossing button, wait for your stick figure to light up, cross the road, and then you'll have access from the west side of 29 directly to the Perkyoman Trail without driving. And that's all I have. I just want to point out for the board, this, this is what we're proposing, but what we're asking tonight just has to do with the zoning amendment. I mean, obviously, we have to go through land development and a bunch of, so really, a bunch of other things before we get to, you know, the actual approval for the actual project. So tonight, we're just asking, we need the zoning amendment in order to be able to do what we're, what we're proposing, the zoning amendment is the first step of many other steps that you know my client will have to to go through in the future in order to have a, a fully approved project for both of those projects. I have a couple questions. Sure. 
the intersection that's uh, on the diagram, that's got uh, PennDOT's blessing at this point or close to it? or been in front of PennDOT a few times uh, and they are on board and we're in the HOP process and working forward. Okay. And there will be uh, access um, to the Perkium Trail right down off of Hopwood all the way through the intersection. So uh, residents correct. who live uh, northwest of the intersection of Hopwood, we can come down there and access the trail. Is that accurate? We'd be bringing, uh, per township guidelines, an eight-foot asphalt trail down the north side of Hopwood across the new intersection. There will be trails within the Yurkus development that will go directly to the Perkium Trail. Okay. Mr. Gray's, I have a question for you. Yes, sir. So if um, we do uh, schedule a, a hearing tonight, um, you have to um, advertise the ordinance, is that correct? Yes. Prior to? So yes. So it needs to be in its final form or close to it? <coughs> Excuse it changes me. changes after you go to the hearing and after it's been to the planning commissions, it has to go back to the planning commissions if there's any changes. Okay. Um, Generally, the ordinance that we, the draft that we have that we've talked about at the Planning Commission, there's a few tweaks, a few cleanup items, some section numbers are off, things that happen when you go multiple drafts. Those things need to be fixed before we're at the point of issuing it and making an official application. Are you still negotiate, speaking with the residents and attorneys that they've hired to uh, make adjustments at their request? Are you, are you doing that still? Yeah, we've had discussions with, with Mike Fury, who is in the audience tonight, about doing that. And we're scheduling a meeting. We're in the process of scheduling a meeting. We're, you know, so prior to any advertising, you'll, you want to clean all that up? Uh, certainly. You? Certainly. Okay. As Joe said, once you get, you sort of lock it in okay. when you put the advertisement out. At, at this point, could I make a uh, request uh, to modify the, uh, the zoning to limit the number of homes? You may. All right. So if I would like to limit it to 48 homes. Um, can you, uh, with the rest of the board's concurrence or whatnot, that's, that's what I would like to see. Instead of the 54? Instead of the 54. I, I can put that in the draft. Can I, can so, so I, don't, I don't know the or, number. Or whatever number the, we want. Yeah, I don't know how the density, I know it's a, you know, a unit per acre. I don't remember that is off the top of my head, so I will make sure that but 48 fits within that unit per acre. Good. So we can restrict the, the maximum, because it's a concern here. Uh, you know, I live there too. I'm, I live right as close as anybody else in this audience there. So uh, we can, what I don't want to do is have 100 homes appear. So Certainly. if we can, in the ordinance, limit it, I'm just saying 48 yes. homes, we can do that. And there's, uh, Mr. Silver were to disappear, you're not going anywhere. I mean, hit by a bus, but you're not going anywhere. Um, so if, if anybody were to take this over down the road, if it's right. not now, it's later, they would be limited to what's in the, uh, in the ordinance. ordinance that we can set a, a maximum number, correct? Yes, correct. Al, why 48? What's your, is that like? Well, uh, there, were, there were previous requests in the 40s. We, we had looked at this a couple years ago. The, there were no traffic improvements, so we, we took no action on it in 2016, right, Phil? We took literally no action on this. And yeah. they wanted to put the 48? No, it was, it was <coughs> um, 40 okay, something. Gotcha. I don't know what, the, it was somewhere in the 40s. So I just, um, I just put a high number. That doesn't mean that that's, at least that's the maximum that, number I'm saying that could go. That would be the maximum that I will put in the ordinance. That's the maximum that they maximum. could go. Right. And we can yes. still have input. Yeah. How many were you planning to put in, Mr. Silver? I was planning on 54. <laughs> uh, and the other question that I have on the intersection is, and maybe Mr. Moore can answer this, is, uh, is Complete Streets working in on this? intersection at all and how are, how are the people on the trail going to get across six lanes of traffic? So complete streets um, in terms of bike lanes and things like that the right of way will not allow significant shoulders in this area because we're trying to move traffic along along the, the main road itself. In terms of crossing there there is going to be pedestrian signals it will be timed for the length of time it needs to cross that road, be activated by push buttons, whatever kind of um, flashing devices or whatever we need to have there for uh, calling out pedestrians it would have. Um, but the, the, the crossing he's talking about is building a trail all the way down to the intersection, having a crossing at the intersection controlled by signalization, <coughs> time to allow pedestrians and bicyclists to cross it, you know, on their own phase if we want to have it that way and then cross over to a trail on the other side. So the crossing would be 
the, the timing would be from one side of the street all the way to the other side of the street with no islands or <coughs> safety things in the middle and no bump outs or anything like that. That's correct. At this time, there is no additional islands on this. It's a five, where, where he's crossing is a five lane cross five section lanes. of road. Um, and I believe the lanes are going to be roughly 13 foot curb lanes, 11 foot through lanes on the inside, and then a 10 foot left turn lane to try to minimize that crossing distance, but allow for efficient traffic flow. Thank you. At least that's what the concept, how we did it in concept, which has to be reviewed by PennDOT and the township. Does it, how about Yerkes Road when you come out to make a left? Does it solve any of that problem? So part of the Yerkes Road um, where we, we asked them in their design to accommodate a left turn lane on, on the major road uh, to allow the left turns into Yerkes. So um, we're getting that. So that traffic is out of the way of through traffic. And then to come out, there's nothing that would prevent a vehicle that if it wants to turn left, mm -hmm. they could go through the site and come out at the traffic signal during peak times. During other times of the day when there's lighter traffic and plenty of gaps, and the signal will actually create some gaps for those folks on Yerkes, they can turn left. So we're not restricting turning movements there. Is there going to be some sort of, I'm going to call it a suicide lane, <laughs> to turn left out of Yerkes and have kind of a safe no man's land to turn into before they have to merge into traffic? Yeah, there is a, um, by design, since we are putting a left turn lane into Yerkes, there has to be a shadowed gore area on the other side. So a car could turn into that and then merge in if they'd like to. Thank you. And again, this is all preliminary, but right. Mr. Silver is right. We did, we did um, speak with PennDOT in great detail to get the design to this stage, and we told him this is the minimum that it needed to be. And uh, he has designed it according to what uh, our office in PennDOT has, has said it needed to be. And what you guys are asking for us tonight is a, a permission to have a hearing on the 21st of October. Correct. Schedule public hearing, yes. Are there other questions and comments from the rest of the board? Um, I will say that I'm not necessarily comfortable with limiting it to 48, but I'm just going to throw that out there. I would go for 50. Any other comments from any of the rest of the board? Uh, that's a good question. Is it a motion, Joe, or we just agree hearing? to have a, peer, uh, a hearing? No, you're, you, well, a couple things. Hold on, Mike. Uh, whether, whether to take additional public comment is up to the chair. Uh, there was a public comment period where it, it was stated that it could be agenda and non-agenda. Right, the, right the, the original statement for public comment is, any item, whether on the agenda or not, and if it's an agenda item, then just state which item that it is. That's set on the board, whatever's not on the agenda, and I thought now would be appropriate time for me to address And when I opened it to public comment, I said anything on any item, agenda or not, if you wanted to speak on an agenda <laughs> item, I did say that. I did say that. I did say that. I said, any item that you wanted to speak on, agenda the, or not, as long as you told us which item was on that you wanted to speak on. There, let, hang, hang on, please. It's not your meeting, ma'am. Let's 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 rein it in a little bit. Let's rein it in a little bit. The 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 vote tonight. The 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 vote tonight is on whether to hold a hearing in October to adopt the ordinance or not. The vote tonight is not to adopt an ordinance or to approve a land development plan. The only issue on the agenda tonight is whether to schedule it for a hearing. Schedule it, scheduling it for a hearing, uh, you could argue, is, is at least a statement uh, in favor of the application to the extent that it wouldn't be a refusal of scheduling it for a hearing, but nobody who votes for a hearing is obligated then in October to vote in favor of the ordinance. 
So it does not mean just because there's a hearing uh, that the ordinance will be adopted uh, in, in October. Actually, Excuse me. Mr. Fury had had the floor, if we could just limit it to his comment right now. It, Madam Chair, are, are you comfortable um, hearing from Mr. Fury? We did have public comment up front. I believe, I believe that there is some confusion that's generated by the, um, this says on an item on or not on this evening's agenda. Apparently, although I think that's clear, it, apparently it's read as being items not on the agenda or the over the board overview piece says not on the agenda so that Mr. Fury, I guess, is saying he would have commented at, at that time had he under, understood uh, our position on the public comment piece. Oh, surely. I thought now would be the appropriate time since the presentation was made. I didn't know if it made much sense. Excuses. His microphone is on. It is on. And I will allow Mr. Fury to speak, but please note that when I spoke earlier, I said you could talk on any tub subject, topic you wanted, as long as you told us which item on the agenda you wanted to speak to. I, I apologize if I misunderstood that. I, I was looking at the uh, notice on the board and I Well, I'm very sorry, but the microphone keeps going in and out, so I'm just going to keep talking, and please stop saying the word mic. I represent John Gentile, Carl Steffen, Joe McGinty, Kirk Griswold, and Ted Gashi, and we border, the properties border on the immediate vicinity of a Hopwood Farm and the Satterwaite properties. I don't know if we have a uh, map showing the entire rezoning, uh, which is uh, being the uh, subject of uh, consideration this, this evening, but if you do, I'd appreciate it if you could put it up all of which properties have now uh, and are zoned for R1, talking about the uh, rezoning map. In 2016, my clients opposed a similar effort for rezoning for townhomes on the Hopwood Farm tract. There was great opposition then, and there is now great opposition uh, to the rezoning of the R1 properties. The board at the time, as Mr. Vagnozzi indicated, uh, indicated they would not proceed with the rezoning. We are here again for a proposal of townhomes on the Hopwood Farm and what appears to be an effort to ward off a challenge that this is spot zoning, the rezoning involves a larger tract of land. My clients do not oppose the rezoning of the parcels out along 29. The prefatory language of the ordinance refers to the goals of the comprehensive plan for properties along Route 29, but there's no logical connection between the rezoning of those parcels out on 29 and the R1 properties, which is Hopwood Farm and the Satterwaite properties. We cannot say that there's a shortage of townhomes or attached dwellings in Upper, upper Providence, and the comprehensive plan does not anticipate that these R1 properties would be rezoned to townhomes. In fact, some of the property was or is designated for open space preservation in the open space plan and in the comprehensive plan. There's no need to reach back into the R1 district other than the connection that this developer is making to tying the two developers together and hoping to bring the township along with the talk of the road improvements on Route 29. We are well aware that when a developer comes in and talks about road improvements, zoning maps get redrawn and zoning ordinances get rewritten. But the first question that we have to ask is, does this developer even own these tracks? I'm fairly certain that unless something's changed very recently, this developer does not own Hopwood Farm. It's not even clear that he has under agreement of sale or anything more than a letter of intent. And why would the development out on Route 29 in single-family homes on Hopwood Farms, in other words, single-family detached homes, not bring the sufficient funds to pay for the road improvements? Is the developer just looking for a windfall? We asked to meet with the developer. He uh, explained his rationale for the requirement for the additional funds. He elected not to uh, meet with us. Uh, but at some point, that question has to be asked. We uh, often hear if Hopwoods Farms is developed into R1, there will be new, numerous driveways on at a Hopwood. That's the same argument as three years ago. The township can control that through the subdivision land development process and have a cul-de-sac road. So these properties can be well developed with single family detached dwellings with a very nice profit to, to the developer. There were a number of planning commission meetings. First meeting, developer was gonna make the road improvements work with just Route 29. 
Then the next meeting, Hopwood was tied to it, and it had to happen, and it had to be townhomes. The question arose at the Planning Commission meeting, what's the matter with townhomes that cost 500,000? Well, we don't know that that's gonna be the price, and that statement is really questioning the value of the single family detached uh, zoning throughout the entire township. The next question, would we even be talking about rezoning Hopwood in the Satterway properties if this developer were not pushing for townhomes on Hopwood? It was surely something readily dismissed out of hand three years ago. It's gotten to the point where drafts of ordinances were being drafted. But let's be clear for the record as to what this is. It's special legislation brought about by a developer wanting to develop two parcels of land having no direct connection to each other other than, as he stated at the Planning Commission meeting, the numbers for the road improvements and signalization came in higher than he anticipated. He needs more money to do the road improvements, and that's, of course, what the township wants. But due to the lack of public funding for the road improvements, the township would be considering a change in the R1 zoning just because the developer needs to make enough profit. The quid pro quo here is evident, and although not unheard of, surely challengeable from a substantive validity challenge standpoint as impermissible contract zoning. But nothing can undo the public statements the developer has made. My clients bought their properties on the basis of the R1 zoning would be on the next tract over. The problem of the intersection of Route 29 and Hopwood is a problem to be solved by the governmental entities involved, specifically a township and PennDOT, and not solved on the backs of my clients with intense development 25 yards from their properties. Once the zoning on Hopwood changes, it is changed. Another developer, or the current owner of Hopwood, and not this developer, can develop townhomes, and the township cannot require that developer to make the off-site and road improvements out on 29. So it's entirely possible that the development out on 29 doesn't go forward. There are no road improvements, but now we have townhomes in the R1 district on Hopwood with the increased density by right. So we're opposed to the rezoning of the R1 areas. If the board is even willing to consider rezoning the R1 area shown on the proposed rezoning map for higher density in townhouses, we would suggest that you hold off on the rezoning of the R1 areas. Rezone out on 29. Let's see how that development goes. It's too early to do both. If in spite of the overwhelming opposition to the rezoning of the R1 areas, the board still wishes to move forward now or in the future, my clients and I have a number of suggestions on the ordinance. Jeff has been very gracious with his time in discussing the ordinance with us. And we offered to meet the developer, but the developer elected not to. But if the board is moving forward, it would be best for us to have a seat at that table. Otherwise, the board may be faced with a substantive validity challenge uh, of this rezoning. The first draft of the ordinance would have allowed intense uses out on 29 to drift back into the R1 if the parcels are under common ownership. Next draft, and again, Jeff should be uh, complimented, his considerable drafting skills, limited to a lineal feed on the arterial. But I have additional suggestions of the ordinance for what I foresee as unintended consequences of the language, especially if one developer gets a hold of a number of the tracks. The townhomes of Hopwood can spread under the current, uh, under the current draft. If we cannot maintain R1 single uh, family zoning and we are tailoring this ordinance to what the developer wants, we should just do the minimum of what is appropriate and have more plans than what is just a conceptual aerial sketch. The ordinance as drafted does not even anticipate conditional use approval by this board for this townhouse development. This is the way that, the, that in addition to the subdivision land development procedures, the board can maintain some control over this situation for any developer, and it may not be this developer. If you're moving forward, please authorize the solicitor and Mr. Grace to coordinate uh, with us regarding our uh, concerns, uh, and maybe we can avoid a substantive challenge, but seriously consider rezoning just route, out on Route 29, those parcels that are uh, considered by the comprehensive plan to, for rezoning, and not the R1, which is not considered for the comprehensive plan for rezoning. Thank you for your time. Thank you. I can just briefly, briefly respond to the comments Mr. Fury makes are inaccurate. However, again, all we're asking for tonight is to schedule the public hearing. My client has been at this for a year and a half. He has spent substantial time and money to get to this point, not knowing if this is even going to happen. So before he spends any more time or any more money in this, he needs to know whether this is something that the board, the board is interested in. The only way he's going to know that is if we have a public hearing and the board makes a decision if this is something they want to move forward or not. Um, so that's all we're asking for tonight so that he has an answer on 
whether he should be spending more time and money in this project. Um, additionally, like I said, you know, we have spoken with residents. I know that my client has spoken with um, Mr. Fury's client. Um, however, in these next two weeks, we're happy to take uh, to speak with Jeff and to speak with Mr. Fury and see if there's anything we can incorporate. At the end of the day, if, it, if we, Mr. Fury's client still have the same opposition to the same section of the ordinance and we schedule the hearing for the 21st, obviously it's up to the board to decide what provisions need to go in that ordinance and if they decide um, it needs to, you know, be revised or whatever needs to happen, that doesn't affect us still being able to schedule the hearing for the 21st. So again, I think what we're asking for tonight is a very benign request and that all of the arguments Mr. Fury makes tonight he can make on the 21st as well. Um, it doesn't, it doesn't, you know, give any of the residents a right not to come on the 21st and, and voice their concern at that point as well. Uh, Brian, the plan that's up on there now, who, who drew that? Who put that plan together? That this? One? I did. Phil, huh? I did. Is that, based on, is that based on the ordinance? That yes. The proposed ordinance? Yes. There is some language tweaks that we have to do to ensure that there's no, um, you know, combining of parcels and, and there's things that I've talked to Eric, Joe's partner, about. Um, we just haven't gotten a chance to put those down in paper yet because we were sort of in a holding pattern. But yes, this is generally my analysis of the parcels based on purely uh, lot dimensions or acreage and what you could develop there. It doesn't take into account natural features. It doesn't take into account okay. uh, um, you know, various other things that you know you would do when, when you're looking at development. Well, none of these are identified as townhomes. They're all... That's the way the ordinance is written right now. That's the way it is right now. Yes. Okay. It's written as single family homes. The only townhomes would be the piece on Hopwood Road that Mr. Silvers has discussed. Can you point out which pieces? Because I don't think the piece that Mr. Silver is thinking about is even indicated on this map. Yeah. This piece where, where Hopwood is written. And this piece are the parcels that are discussed by Mr. Silver for the townhouses. And then this maroon piece here is the uh, apartment homes. So it would be a conditional use, is that what Mr. Fury was saying? It would be a conditional use to put townhouses in that YMU well, zone district? Well, that, that's, that's his request. I, I don't know that that's necessary. Well, ha um, right uh, now, I don't uh, think the language is written that way. But again, I haven't looked at the draft probably in three months. So, uh, okay. you know, I, I, that's something that we could certainly discuss. Uh, conditional use is something the township has used very frequently when it comes to land development. and changes in density and things like that. So it certainly is an option. Can I ask Mr. Fury a question? Not Mr. Fury, Mr. Silver a question? Can I ask for a point of clarification? Well, just one second, please. How many of these properties do you have under any kind of agreement? Both. Pardon? Both. Just the two that you're proposing townhouses for? That's one piece. Well, it's both sides of the road. Okay, I, I understand that. That's okay. Oh, uh, sir, back there, you had a question. If you will please come up to the microphone. State your name and address, please. Uh, Joe Jacobino, 99 Yerkes Road, Collegeville. If the board uh, agrees to a public hearing, does that mean it approves the amendment and the proposal? Before. As no, Mr. That, President, uh, I mean, are you making the recommendation if you have a public hearing that you uh, accept the amendment and are, are going no, to hear that, public comment? No, that's a comment? separate action. That's an entirely separate action. As Mr. Bresnan stated, the public hearing is strictly a public hearing to hear their evidence and hear their and position. And then how soon after a public hearing do you vote? It, it can be the same night. I'd say it's usually the same night. But this is not a situation where the, the, the ordinance is not under any current challenge as to its validity. The township has in front of it a request by a developer to change the ordinance in a certain way. And that gives the township a great deal of leeway in operating under its own schedule and how it proceeds. I know Mr. Silver has a schedule relative to going to settlement that is on, on his side of things, but the, the township will proceed 
uh, as it sees fit. So if it were comfortable after the hearing voting, it would, but it, that wouldn't necessarily happen. And, and one other statement that I, I would make, um, Mr. Fury made a very um, erudite uh, summary of his client's position, and, and, and I thank him for that. One, one thing that we would never allow to happen is to just put money in township coffers and intentionally adopt an ordinance that is not legal. That does not mean that it wouldn't later, sometimes ordinances are challenged in court and sometimes they're found invalid. I'm not saying that we're infallible, but I, I would kind of refine that one point to say we would never uh, intentionally let go of an ordinance and vote on an ordinance that, that I put my seal of approval on uh, without it being uh, you know, vetted as being legal. Might we then lose on an appeal? Sure, those things happen all the time, but it would never knowingly and intentionally happen. But you say the normal operating procedure is that you normally do vote after a public hearing on the same. Um, I would say I would say more often than not, but that that's that that doesn't bind anybody to anything. We had uh, we had I think we've had two presentations on Pulte homes that haven't been brought to a vote. You know, still a year later, so it, it's not always voted on the same night by any means. Sometimes things happen at the hearing that raise additional uh, questions. Yeah. My only question would be then, if you normally vote on something the same night, you probably have already made up. Well, don't, don't you know, you, you can either take my words for what I'm saying them as, or you can interpret them your way. I'm telling you it doesn't necessarily mean that there will be a vote that night. If you want to spin it to say that they're going to no, do I'm that. No, just, I'm just trying to understand the procedure. That's maybe they will, maybe they won't. It's just, I never really know going into a given evening because you haven't heard any, everything yet, and sometimes they still have more questions, and sometimes they don't. That's all. Okay. Thank you. Yes, please come up. State your name and uh, address, please. Uh, hi, uh, John Gentile, 1704 Morgan Lane. So, John Gentile, 1704 Morgan Lane. Um, I've never seen this before. Jeff. It was on a planning commission. It was no, no, I, I, I know, I saw all the rezoning. No, no, this exact slide was taken from the planning commission on Jan okay, July well, 24th. That's great, but I've never okay. seen it before. So I have a question for you. All of the light green area, right? Yes. That is proposed to be rezoned to R2. Is, is that correct as well? No. It's not. It is not. The area in the light gray area that is this, I guess it's more green on this. This area right here, defined by the fatter gray line, is the area within the R, or I'm sorry, that would be becoming the YMU district area. Okay, so in that entire green area, the only place where proposed townhouses are going on Hopwood Farm. Is that right? Everything else, everything else in that green area is single family homes. If I look at the proposed, you know, reading this all the way across, all the proposed, every single thing that's being proposed there, except for Hopwood Farm, is single family homes on 20,000 square foot lots, which is a half of an acre. Every single thing Yes, and I've explained except, this to your attorney. He and I have had conversations about this. Except for that. So as a homeowner, I feel even further hung out to dry here, truthfully, because, you know, 29 and, and Hopwood is an issue. We all know it. Everybody knows it. But you're really putting it on the backs of a few people. You're throwing numbers out there, 50, 48. I don't even know where they come from. But, you know, as, and I, Laurie, I'm sorry. I don't, wanna, I don't want to... Uh, I don't want to upset you because I asked for a point of clarification and now I'm, I'm expounding. But I do want you guys to understand that as a homeowner who buys his house, you, one wouldn't expect this to happen. So that's all I wanted to say. Thank you. Thank you.
We will now move on to item number four. Are we, I'm oh, sorry. sorry. Sorry, I'm sorry. I jumped we're, ahead of myself. We're still at that point where you had, you, had, you had asked me whether there was going to be, you know, whether it was a motion, the answer would have been yes, yes. A, a motion to, to advertise for a hearing. Okay. October 21st. I'm sorry? On the 21st. Right? On, the, okay. on, on the 21st. On the 21st. Specifically on, thank you. The 21st of October? October, yes. October. Okay. So yes, I was jumping ahead of myself. I'll make a motion to uh, uh, set, schedule a, um, a hearing on uh, the 21st of October 2019 to discuss the proposed Silver Rhino Yerke Station project. Do I have a second? I'll second that. I have a motion and a second to um, schedule a public hearing for the Silver Rhino Yerke Station project on October 21, 2019. All in favor say aye. 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 All aye. opposed? No. No. Motion carries three to two. Uh, thank you. Moving on to uh, item number four, consider adoption of resolution 2019-43 to approve a special services agreement with library system services to perform a needs analysis for the future siting of a possible library facility within Upper Providence Township. Madam Chair, I've included a codified resolution which c covers the needs analysis proposal from LSS and Joe uh, has also looked at the master services agreement. That's referenced as um, Exhibit B. And um, I, um, I know Helene was not here at the last meeting. I've had a chance to brief her on that, so I think it's ready for adoption. I would appreciate if conversations could take place outside of this room, please. It's very distracting. So it's on page 25, correct, for the LSS? Yes. <clears throat> Joe, you had one question on the uh, prevailing, I think it was on the right to know, which they included in there, so. Uh, I had one, one comment a few weeks ago that I think you took back yeah. to them. I think that was the only one I had, it yeah. was minor. That's been incorporated. Okay. Yeah. Do we have questions, comments, discussion on this, please? So I had a quick question. When they come back to us with an agreement, they're going to be, are they going to also be checking out locations or they're going to be giving recommendations? Yes. Okay. They'll be looking at, you know, neither you or I have any idea on how to do a library. They'll, they'll be doing the groundwork, uh, interviewing a lot of people. I noticed we had somebody tonight from the county library system. They'll be engaging those people and the county officials, us and other stakeholders and looking at possible parcels for, uh, for uh, programming, uh, whether it's a hybrid use, a standalone use. Okay. Any other questions, comments? If none, I will entertain a motion. Um. I'll make a motion to adopt resolution 2019-43, approving an agreement with the library system services. I'll second that. I have a motion and a second to adopt a resolution 2019-43, approving an agreement with Library System Services. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Um, we move on to consider adoption of resolution 2019-48, accepting dedication of a part of the sanitary sewer system of shops of Upper Providence. Sure. Um, when the Shops Upper Providence development out on Ridge Pike was in the land development process, the township engineer um, envisioned the need for several homes on the west side of that development um, to connect to public sewer where there was none otherwise available. Um, through the review process, Bill had them run the sewer line along that would ultimately serve the Shops at Upper Providence property along the back of the property and then bring it up adjacent to this property line so that it could serve these home, residential homes on this side. Um, one of those folks now wants to connect to the sewer before we can allow them to do that. We have to accept dedication of the highlighted section of the sewer main and manholes that are on the plan. Um, 
There is a note on the record plan specifying this specific section of sewer. We're not taking all of it within the development, only the portion that's necessary to serve those uh, adjacent residential homes and the resolution that you have before you would accomplish that purpose. What, what else, what else is, how many other homes are gonna be, can hook up to this thing? I think there's about five presently. Yeah, four or five. You said four or five homes along Township Line Road up there near the bank. Is that correct? So the sewer, the sewer from this development, from this, from the shops, go into this sewer, correct? The sewer main, the tie-in point was right here, where they tie into the existing sanitary sewer main. They extended along the back here to pick up. Um, uh, Lytle on the, at this location. Right. Continue to cross to pick up this group of buildings, and then it wraps around and picks up this building. I think this one is served from um, from Main from Main Street from Ridge Pike. Um, so right. there's additional sewer on here that we're not taking dedication of. It solely serves the shopping center. We have no desire to accept responsibility for that portion of the main. But anywhere that more than one property owner ties together, we're obligated by DEP to take ownership of that, such that if there's a problem, the township is yeah. forced to come fix it. You don't have two property owners pointing fingers at each other. Um, so again, it's just the highlighted portion of the sanitary sewer main and manholes on the plan. I'll make a motion that we adopt resolution 2019-48, accepting dedication of part of the sanitary system, sewer system of the shops of Upper Province. I'll second that. We have a motion and a second uh, to adopt resolution 2019-48, accepting dedication of limited sanitary sewer facilities in the shops at Upper Providence Development. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Moving on to number six, consider adoption of resolution 2019-44 regarding the preliminary plan for Providence Business Park 3HB Fraser. Mr. Mullen. Good evening. Uh, Joe Gambone could not be here tonight. He's on vacation. So I have with me Tom Ludgate, our civil engineer, Eric Ostenchuk, our traffic engineer. I think um, you have seen this plan before uh, when you granted tentative approval. And the reason for that uh, visual that you see there is at the planning commission meeting, our neighbors uh, at the Meadows asked that the landscaping be put in even for the, the next thing on your agenda, which is a 60,000 square foot building. Right. And we agreed to do that. And Joe, you might want to put that in the resolution that when we get approval and start construction of the first of whatever building it is, we're gonna do all of that landscaping which is shown on that visual. We had also asked for three waivers which the Planning Commission recommended. Your consultants have indicated they do not want us to get the one waiver which dealt with the grade of the emergency access. Their concern is that someday that may not be an emergency access and someday the traffic may just dictate that we actually have a road going out onto Egypt Road, and we're okay with that. We don't have a problem and withdraw that waiver request, or you can just deny it either way. Uh, the other two things just deal with the size of the plans and the fact that your ordinance does not allow LED lights, which are people want to have today. So they're the two waiver requests. Um, happy to answer any questions you might have. We have will complies with all the letters. I, I only have one that doesn't really relate to this particular development. Not that you would have any answers for it. One, uh, he, he owns, Mr. Gambone also owns a development across the street there. Across Hollow Road. Across, across Hollow Road, correct. Yeah. When is he going to finish that? Because we've never, that's never been dedicated, has it, Bill? Correct, there's still uh, some stormwater management uh, cleanup items yeah, that need to be and, done. And they were, yeah, and they were just down there fixing the, um, the retention basin that was down there, so I'm wondering when he's going to finish that development. 
That's the first I'm hearing it, so I don't have an answer for you. I, I, I know, I, and that's why I said that. But I will certainly get one. Um, yeah. And I'll point out that, Bill, is everything finished there? It's just a matter of like dressing it up for dedication? Yes. It, okay. I mean, it's 99% complete, but they do need to complete the... Uh, have you given them a punch list? Uh, they had a list. They were out there working on it. Um, I think I saw... Ten it. years? Yeah, well, they, yeah, over the last, <laughs> but the last time they were there, it was less than a year ago, I, maybe six months okay. ago. I forget exactly I'll, when it was. They, I'll tell the Jerry trees, that that's you know, a concern the, of the we have to address it. The trees on the berms were 12 years old and needed to be cut down and the roots removed and so on. So, trees grow. Yeah, they, they did a very nice job growing trees <laughs> where I they shouldn't have them. Definitely address it. I have no, I have no problem with this. I'm, I'm okay. Any further discussion, questions on this one? Is this 2019-44? Yes. On, what's, um, on page 57, it says Upper Perky, I'm in school district. <laughs> we, we noticed that earlier. Okay. Casey Sorry. called it. We, he's not signing it tonight because we're going to correct that and resend it tomorrow. Very good. Thank you. Sorry, not the... Uh, Thank you for noticing. What's he calling it? Usually the signature line has the school district I don't know where to go there. I see. Okay, yeah. um, yeah. if there's no further discussion on this, do I have a motion? I'll make a motion to adopt resolution 2019-44, granting preliminary plan approval for the HB Frazier plan in Providence Business Park. I'll second that. I have a motion and a second to adopt resolution 2019-44, granting preliminary plan approval for the HB Fraser plan in Providence Business Park 3. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. And I, if nobody objects, I will add, when we clean up the one type, I'll, I'll add the language about the landscaping that uh, Mr. Mullen suggested be added. I assume nobody objects to it being approved that way. Okay, yeah. thanks. No. Do we need a special vote on that? No. <laughs> Okay, number seven, consider adoption of resolution 2019-45 regarding the tentative sketch plan for Providence Business Park 3, 60, 60K flex building. Okay, me again. Uh, this, this is a 60,000 square foot spec building, basically. The undedicated hollow road part is full now. So they have to build something else for possible tenants. So the object, this is tentative, by the way. So there's no wa waiver requests here. This is purely tentative. And what we're saying is we have, we want to be ready when the next tenant comes. So we can't say, well, we don't have any space. We want to be able to build a building and have it there to outfit to the particular tenants that come in. Uh, again, we are all will comply with all the review letters. And again, we'll answer any questions you have. Should mention the Planning Commission recommended approval. If there's no further discussion or questions from Mr. Mullen, do I have a motion? I'll make a motion to adopt resolution 2019-44 uh, granting tentative sketch approval for the 60K flex building in Providence Building Park 3. I'll second that. We have a motion and a second to uh, adopt resolution 2019-44, granting tentative sketch approval for the 60K flex building in Providence Business Park 3. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Moving on to number eight. Thank you. Good night. Thank you, Mr. Mullen. Uh, consider adoption of resolution 2019-46 regarding PennDOT traffic signal application for the intersection of Egypt Road and Hollow Road. Is that Mr. Moore? Good evening. You're getting used to seeing me with these TE-160 forms are your favorite forms now. So just so, just so I can be clear, anytime there's a modification to a traffic signal, whether it's a new signal or an existing signal, an adjustment to it, uh, before that can be made, PennDOT uh, wants to have this form accompany it. Um, this happens to go with the 615 Egypt Road project. 
Um, so on page two of that resolution, it tells you exactly what they're going to be doing to the, to the intersection. Um, down under proposed improvements, uh, they're going to add to the plan the new site driveways that are in the vicinity of the intersection. They're going to add the uh, pedestrian signals so that you can cross the road, uh, replace push buttons, add video detection, battery backup to the controller cabinet, uh, pavement markings, et cetera. Uh, and retime the intersection. So that's all part of the 615 Egypt Road project at the northeast corner of Hollow Road, I should say southeast corner of Hollow Road and Egypt Road. So this signal plan accompanies the HOP plans uh, and the application to PennDOT. So it has been reviewed by our office and at this point um, they're at the home stretch in terms of dot in the I's, crossing the T's, so we made the recommendation to staff to move this into resolution so that they can take the next step to get their approvals from PennDOT. So all the costs are borne by the applicant, nothing by the township. This is borne by which applicant? Uh, this would be Gambone or his LLC, whatever okay. has been formed for that particular development. So we, we have a lot going on. On Hollow Road there, Mr. Gambone has the several developments down there, and this one is being uh, this one's being proposed because of the development on the corner there. Yes, and it's and ha how do we you know like there's are, are there other I don't even know how to say this through the process he was supposed to be doing road improvements on that intersection because of something else. Now we're, we're taking his money from this, this project over here and using it instead of this project here. So he gets the benefit of both. Is that, am I this explaining is, myself? This is tied directly to 615, which is the corner property, the old shell property. Okay, but one of the developments down the road was there was some discussion about that intersection and improvements to the road because of the development that's down there, because of this new development that, that, that and nothing's been, nothing so far has been done to the intersection there. The global project um, had to do the road improvements along the frontage, and they actually ended up doing the road improvements along their frontage plus the um, storage facilities frontage because there was a second phase of that project that right. has never gotten built. But I think part of their arrangement for the access into global, they traded that for completing all the road improvements in front of those two properties. So those frontage improvements were done as part of that project. Um, there's going to be some additional minor frontage improvements as part of the Shepherd project to tie in the 50 feet or so of curbing in there. Okay. Um, but uh, I'll defer to Casey as the overall traffic. I, I think this signal is, incorporates all the traffic from all those developments in it. Well, you have a master traffic study, I believe. Yeah, so as part of the resolution that you approved tonight for HB Frazier, um, they did a master traffic study looking at all those developments, Global Packaging, 60K Flex, HB Frazier, BWR, 615, and uh, there are a couple parcels that they didn't put in there. We, we wrote a comment letter that was issued last week to them. Uh, they've They've looked it over. They've said they'll address all those comments. There's no major improvements at that intersection beyond what they're proposing to do um, that's required by their traffic study thus far. The biggest comment that we had was when and if in the future, if all of that area is occupied, you know, and there, it's being leased and utilized by the trucking facilities, that that emergency access may no longer be used just as an emergency access. We want it designed today so that it can be opened up in the future, graded properly, building setbacks properly, all those things. So if we need secondary access, we will get it at that location. Um, they may have to do something else when they uh, submit their traffic study in terms of restripe a left turn lane or something like that but we don't have that traffic study back. This application specifically tonight, this TE-160 okay. form, is for the board to authorize so they can submit the plan and get their permit plan so they can do that as part of their 615. 
Okay. When and if the master traffic study says in three, four, five more years they have to restripe left turn lanes to make them longer on Egypt Road, we They're will be back in with another TE 160 saying they have to modify the plan again and restripe Egypt Road. Okay. Okay. So we're 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 always looking out for this. Okay. Any more questions, discussion? If not, I'll entertain a motion. I'll make a motion to adopt resolution 2019-46, approving an amended traffic signal plan for the intersection of Egypt Road and Hollow Road. I'll second that motion. We have a, sec a motion and a second to adopt resolution 2019-46, approving an amended traffic signal plan for the intersection of Egypt Road and Hollow Road. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Uh, number nine, consider adoption of resolution 2019-47 regarding PennDOT traffic signal application for the uh, intersection of Egypt Road and Mill Road slash Oak Shopping Center driveway. Okay, so this form is so this is not developer related. This is 100% this is township and what this involves is a sign. If you are heading from 422 westbound on Egypt Road toward Mill Road, um, you get into the left turn lanes that turn onto Mill Road to go to Target or to the movie theater. There is no sign there that prevents you from making a U-turn at that, at that light. The problem that, that, that occurs there is there's a direct conflict. If you're coming up Mill Road from the target, when that left turn goes, you get a right turn arrow to clear that traffic out because that's the heavier movement of traffic. So I, we talked with staff, there's two options. Either you get rid of the right turn arrow to move with the left turn, which really needs it to move the traffic at that intersection, otherwise it would back up or you put a no left turn sign in there for the westbound traffic on Egypt so that that traffic cannot, will not conflict. You mean a U-turn, U-turn, you said Yes, turn. did I say no left turn? No, okay. no, no U-turn at that location. Makes sense. Have we had crashes there? Excuse me? Have we had some crashes there, accidents? Um, I think there's been some near crashes, okay. uh, according to our discussion with Sergeant Solario, but, uh, Nothing that's readily documented, but there's a lot of people that turn, make that turn to get to the Starbucks there. So there's an alternate way that they can go through the shopping center, come straight at the light, and, and make that movement. But now they can go up the road or make a left around the island and come in the drive. They can do that too. Is that what you do? <laughs> that's even a safer movement. So I'll entertain a motion. I'll make a motion to adopt resolution 2019-47 approving an amended traffic signal plan for the intersection of Egypt Road and Mill Road. I'll second that. Motion. We have a motion and a second to adopt resolution 2019-47 approving an amended traffic signal plan for the intersection of Egypt Road and Mill Road. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Manager and department head reports. I have a few updates. I want to just uh, give a, a somewhat of an update on where things stand with the recreation center update. I think there's another slide. Hi, I'm Maureen Green. I just want to um, let you know that the plans for our community day 2019 are going along extremely well. We have almost all of our business expo table sold. We do have all of our food vendors lined up. We have plenty of volunteers that are working for the day, township employees. And we're just praying for better weather than we had last year so we can actually hold the event. Um, I hope to see lots of you there as well. All of the normal activities that we have, the bounce houses, the um, mobile zip line games for uh, Teenagers, the game truck will be there, as well as the petting zoo and the pony rides for the little ones. So I'm sure that we, we have the parking under control better this year than we have in the past because um, we have Richard and Brian are going to head that up for us. 
Also, things seem to be going along really well with IFP taking over the recreation center. The only request that they've made to us recently is they've had a lot of members requesting to have annual memberships rather than monthly. If you all remember, we went to monthly memberships in June of 2018 when we didn't determine whether the recreation center would be in existence for more than a year. So we've proposed that if we do allow, if you do allow us to have annual memberships, that people will get approximately a 5% discount for paying a year in advance. So, any questions? Okay, well, thank you. I guess the question, does the board have any issues if we reinstated that discount? I mean, right now it's, it's been on a month to month basis. We're it's looking only, at- We only currently sell monthly memberships and people would like to have a membership that they know that they can just pay for and forget about it for a year rather than coming in and renewing it every month. I personally think that a lot of people pay for an annual membership and then, you know, after a few months they lose interest, but they can't cancel it. They don't cancel it. It just, we have the money in. How, how does that annual fee compare to other facilities in the area's annual fees? It's, it's fairly um, standard across the board. We're giving them about a 5% discount. If you were a township, an adult township resident, it would be $20 a month. That's what any of the fitness centers that are in the area are charging, somewhere between $20 and $30 a month. And this would be, instead of 240 it would be 230 And we carried that same discount process across the board, depending upon what kind of, whether you're a resident or what, your, um, what age category you fall into. We do give seniors a discount. Not but looking for a vote, so just, a, just a general feel. Okay. Looks good. Okay. Thanks. Thank, Thank you, you, Maureen. Maureen. Uh, this next item um, is the capital improvement guidelines. Can you, I'm going to split the, uh, sw switch this up. Can you go down to number 12 real quick? Um, next item. Uh, sorry for the smaller font. I, on my computer, it looks larger than that. But I, I wanted to give a 2020 budget timeline so we all stay on track. Um, I, I mixed it up a little bit this year because of all the unknown items out there on capital budgets and um, the Act 209. I've been working with Casey's office and trying to get some uh, dotted of the I's on some of our future five-year projects and how the funding sources would be done. Same with Bill and our consultants and our departments. Um, I'm found in the prior years the capital budget is usually more onerous than the operating budget which is you know generally um, goes on a, on a steady rhythm and Given that we're going to have a lot of, um, there's still a lot of question marks on the, uh, the, the, the programming of the, fire, the firehouse and the fire apparatus and other, um, still as, as, as I say, sit here this evening, still some unknowns, but what I tried to do is come up with a, um, a, an approach on how we can rank, look at all of our capital budgets and rank them quantitatively, trying to take the subjectivity out of how we rank them. If you can go back up a couple more slides. Um, I've had a chance over the past couple of months to look at how other towns uh, review and rank their capital budgets. And um, what I've found are um, criteria based around anywhere from 10 or 15 different types of criteria. They, they weight them accordingly. Um, I've, I've come up with, uh, I always try to keep it as simple as possible, try to come up with a simple template based on 10 categories. Um, each one would be weighted from one, not anywhere uh, ranked from either low of a one to a high of a 10, having um, applicability to that particular criterion. Um, looking at traffic and transportation, health and public safety, some of these overlap, um, exist, how it impacts existing infrastructure, how it promotes economic development, quality of life, regulatory compliance, whether it's an unfunded mandate, um, any external funding availability in terms of grants, developer contributions, uh, the impact on our operational budget, <clears throat> the timing and location of certain projects, even though a certain project may not be high on the priority list, if it's related, if it could be done cheaper, as piggyback with another project that would rank high. And then obviously any projects that advance our long-range our long planning. 
come up with about 100 weights. And I have a more detailed grid that I was going to send out to the board. But um, this is the, the type of approach I'm going to use to try to um, evaluate our capital proposals and rank them. And I would uh, encourage each board member as we get the proposals and we do our budget deliberations that each one of you uh, independently try to go through this and rank these projects according to these criteria. And if you have any recommendations on how it could be tweaked, um, I'm all on all ears. And, um, so I'll be following up with a more detailed grid later. Back to the budget timeline. So we're looking uh, up through, uh, from August through the uh, mo most of August. Uh, we've received all of our um, capital improvement information from our departments and consultants. That's now behind us. Like I said, we're reviewing that. Looking at um, meeting with the staff uh, for this month uh, to review the preliminary budget forecasts and fine tuning the requests. Um, looking at uh, refining of the submissions and the financial forecasts um, late September, early October. We should have good three-quarter data after the end of September. Um, looking at um, reviewing um, further refinements in October. Looking at um, trying to get the, the preliminary budget to you guys by anywhere between October 28th and November 1st and then um, legally advertising the budget on November 4th. Um, that's when it officially becomes the board's budget and you can have as many budget workshops, deliberations as you want. Um, assuming that there aren't a lot of changes, we'd be looking at trying to get the budget adopted. My goal this year is to try to have it adopted by December 2nd. So um, that's a t timeline that's subject to review, but I wanted to put that out there for everybody's uh, um, review, if you have any vacation conflicts or anything, we'll try to work around that schedule. Summer's over, folks. So. Last item. Um, at the last meeting, there were some questions raised about um, uh, the municipal authority's role in stormwater management authority. Um, and I've put a hard stop on a lot of their work until um, um, we've had a, a chance to have the board sit down in a joint meeting to understand the parameters of what they've been working on and to try to get an idea from you, from the board, that you're comfortable with them proceeding forward on this, um, on stormwater management regulations, um, at how involved you want to be, um, whether you want the authority at all involved, or whether you want to take this over. Um, this is going to have a big component in our 2020 budget, especially as it gets to stormwater improvement projects. And um, we have, this, I think it's worth a special joint meeting just to discuss this unfunded mandate. Um, <clears throat> for the past five years, we've been pretty much shuffling paper, um, doing all types of things to meet the minimum requirements of the, um, of the EPA's guidelines on stormwater and the MPDES uh, permit requirements. Um, we're going to have to start actually um, programming some hard dollars over the next five years. And I think we need to have a um, detailed discussion without all, without all the other static that comes with our budget process so we know uh, we have a game plan in place so that we can be in compliance with uh, the EPA starting next year. So that's all I have. Thank you, Mr. One Tupper. question, uh, one point that we were having for a joint meeting possibly was meeting before our meeting on October 7th, maybe meeting at 6 o'clock before a regular meeting so we don't have to have a special meeting. I don't know if, any, if that's good in everybody's calendar. I think, Cheryl, we got at least a quorum of members from the authority. So if everybody's okay with that, I was going to book, yeah. book that. Okay. All right. Next we have consultant reports. Mr. Uh, Bill. Mr. Bill. Mr. Mr. Bill. Bill. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, just real quick, uh, the Old State Road uh, project, sewer project, was uh, completed. It's 100% uh, paved. It's striped. Um, the only thing that's not done is some topsoil and grass seed along the edge of the road. Um, so that project is complete. Summit and timber uh, was milled and paved before Labor Day. We didn't think that was going to get paved, but uh, the contractor had an opening in the schedule and was able to do that real quick. So that's 100% uh, done. 
the handicap ramps do need some topsoil and seeding, you know, throughout the township where they were done on private property. Um, and the river trail project is ongoing and continuing. So that concludes my report. Yay. So on the sewer project, do we know uh, how many people are going to hook up or anybody who's made I've plans two, right now to hook up? Two people contacted me last week as to when they may connect. Um, I don't know if Brian or if anybody else I know. And I think those two were different than the folks that Dante had heard from, you know, a year ago or so when that project first came up as a project. So, uh, Do we have a way of notifying them, uh, the people on that who can hook up? Do, do we have a way of, like, sending out a letter after, or something After the final, final inspection, they'll pull a mandrel through the sanitary sewer main following the paving. As soon as that's done, we'll send a letter out notifying those people of the availability of the, availability of the public sewer. That's great. Uh, solicitor's report, Mr. President? Nothing additional tonight from me, unless you have any questions. Thank you. Any supervisor's comments? Well, I do. I'm going to the Lidl grocery store opening tomorrow at 7.40 in the morning. Anybody who wants to join me is welcome to come. Please do. Tim will be there with me. Where is it? Uh, Lidl. It's right across from the Giant. It's on Ridge Pike and Township Line. Is that how you say that? Lidl? It, Lidl. Not yes, not it Lidl. rhymes with needle. Okay. <laughs> Who's bringing the money? Well, I don't know. They're not paying me. <laughs> oh, oh, thank you. Well, I might be able to read it. If it was in Italian, I'd have a real problem. Um, and I'm going to recommend again uh, People's History of the United States by Howard Zinn. Um, upcoming events. We have Board of Supervisors meetings on September 16th, October 7th, October 21st, all at 7 o'clock. Although, did we just say that we were meeting at 6 on the 7th? A joint meeting with the um, authority on the 7th, that's 6 o'clock. And then planning commission meeting is September 11th at uh, 7 o'clock, is that right, Jeff? Yes, 7 o'clock. Okay, um, o agenda items there are 209 4th Avenue, Wyrant Land Development. Yes. We also have the municipal authority meeting by itself, October 15th at 7 o'clock. Parks and Recreation Committee meeting schedule, uh, September 18th and October 16th at 6. And uh, Community Day at the Recreation Center, September 21st, 1 to 8, with fireworks following. Any further comments from anybody? If not, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion to adjourn. I'll second that. Woohoo! I have a motion and a second to adjourn. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? We're adjourning. Thank you very much. Thank you.